Hi, I'm Mike Fisser, and today we're talking so to protect to South Africa. The uh, reason why we're doing that, of course, is there have been a fair amount of queries about this, and we would like to assist you to make the informed decision when it comes to deciding on what to do with surge protection. Now, of course, surge protection has a long history. Obviously, we design our electrical networks to have a certain operating voltage. When that surge comes in with the lightning, what's going to happen is that surge waveform comes in. There's our normal operating voltage. That's going to pull that operating voltage up to a very high level, and that then blows your equipment. So we've had this problem for a long time. Now, basically, if we look at what's happened with the nature of the way we use electricity, it's gone through a massive revolution in the last 30 years. Think about this. 40 years ago, we didn't have computers. We didn't have integrated circuits. We had very little electronics. Now, of course, when we talk about high voltages and electronics, electronics we're talking about small, small gaps between conductors. Lightning flashes over when you've got a small gap. So, if you look at surge protection, it's come a long way over a long time. In the original uh, process of surge protection, we had two points looking at each other over the insulator that ran the high voltage power line. So there's your insulators holding up the power line that then jumps onto the next uh, pylon, sorry, the other side of the pylon. Now they take these, what we call arcing horns. Now, when you get that surge coming in on the line, the arcing horn flashes over, shunts it down to ground, protects the substation down the stream. That is the most basic surge protection we've got. That's the arcing horn. The equivalent on the low voltage side or the telecommunications instrumentation side is what we call a gas button. Gas button, really a little ceramic tube, tiny little ceramic tube, two steel plates either side and an inert gas inside. And the purpose of that inert gas, guys, is to prevent carbonization during the arc because those two plates are really close. That surge comes in, the plates arc across. That means that the other end of the line sees a lot less of that surge, meaning your equipment takes less damage. So what happens, of course, when you get that arc, you've got massively high temperature, you've got high energy. If you have normal air in there, you're going to get carbonization. That carbonization is going to give you leakage and that component will fail. Um, similarly, it also could cause all sorts of problems on your electrical system. If it's on the main side or if it's on telecom side or instrumentation side. So surge protection actually is a massive field. And it, is something you need to integrate properly into your systems. Um, if you're able to do that, you're going to get the re results you're looking for. Your system's going to work. Your equipment's going to last. You're not going to have problems, but you do have to integrate it right, couple it together right, and make sure it's got a good shunt path. I'm Mike Fisser, parkwallinfo.com. I hope you like this. Thank you very much.